All right, so in the previous video, we looked at a vehicle seeking a target. The vehicle was had singular laser vision focus. That no matter where that target is, I'm moving at maximum speed towards that target. And what we saw is the vehicle sort of just was trying to like slam into that target. In this case, it's not an actual thing. It's just pixels, so it went right by it, had to turn around and come back, and you have this back and forth, back and forth. So what if, and that might be what you want sometimes, but what if what you want is that vehicle to try to rush towards that target, but when it gets close, slow down, slow down, and stop. So let's, let's try to imagine how we might do that. So, okay, so <laughs> remember, the key thing here is thinking about a vehicle's desired velocity at any moment in the simulation. So <clears throat> we have our vehicle, we have our target, and what we're gonna do, we're gonna add something here. So before, what we had before was it didn't matter, like these could be like a whole bunch of vehicles. I don't know what I'm drawing, but they were always looking, this was this was this is always this was an accurate representation of all their desired velocities if they're all trying to seek that target. No matter how close they are to that target, their desired velocity is at maximum speed. But now we want to say something. We want to say, hey, if I'm like over here, maybe I want my maximum speed to be, my desired velocity to be that, that my desired velocity to be in that direction, um, but, but, but not as fast. And then when I'm a little closer, even less fast still. And when I'm closer, less fast still. And if I'm on the target, my desired velocity should actually be zero. Right? My desired velocity should be zero. So how are we going to do that? One way that we can do it is we can think of the target as having an invisible circle around it. That's the worst circle anybody's ever drawn, but it's the best I can do, by golly. Okay, so this circle has an invisible target around it with some radius. And I think in my example, just for the sake of argument, the radius is equal to 100 pixels. But, you know, you could come, kind of come up with whatever you want. And we could say that anywhere, when the, when the vehicle is anywhere outside of the target, so anywhere, any, I'm sorry, outside of the circle, anywhere, 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 outside of this circle, its desired velocity's magnitude is maximum speed. So when it is here, it desires to go at maximum speed. When it is here, it desires to go at maximum speed, etc. Now, when it's right on the edge, it still desires to go at maximum speed. When it is right at the target, it desires, its magnitude is zero. He is zero here, maximum speed here. So what is it when it's halfway in between? Maximum speed divided by two. So maybe you're thinking of something here. Maybe you're thinking that, hey, if I could get the distance, p vector distance, between my location and the target, then I could say, hey, the magnitude the, the, my speed, I'm sorry, my speed, my desired speed, I could use the map function, right? I want to map that distance, which is anywhere from 0 to 100 to r, anywhere between 0 to 100 to between 0 and maximum speed. Sorry, I kind of ran out of room here. Right? So the map function is our friend here. We could say if, it's, if the distance is greater than r, it's maximum speed. If it's less than r, it's some range between 0 and maximum speed. And map will, give us, will, will do that for us. So this is a really fantastic solution. It works very well. I'm going to show it to you in a second. But I just want to stop for a second and emphasize a point. Craig Reynolds came up with this, I, I assume. <laughs> That's what I read. I, I believe it to be true. I looked at it and implemented it in processing. And you can use it now. But the real question isn't just to say, it's the point of this isn't just to say that this model is exactly what you should use. It's this way of thinking. You're looking at a system. You're making choices of how your vehicle should be moving. And you're analyzing it to determine, OK, well, it needs to slow down. So its desired velocity is going to be based on its distance from the target. But you could come up with your own scenario. And I, I'm probably going to say this way too many times. But I think it's really crucial here. You, you should be thinking about making up your own um, steering behaviors. OK, so let's take a look at how this plays out in code. And I've actually got it right here already. If you see the arrive function looks very, very similar to the steering function. But now we're just saying, hey, what's my distance? If my distance is less than 100, set the magnitude using the, by mapping the distance to, to a range which has a range from 0 to 100 to 0 and maximum speed. Otherwise, in all other cases, it's maximum speed. And if I run this, we will now see that as it reaches the target, it slows down and stops. 
I'm supposed to look into the camera because it makes these videos better somehow, but I keep forgetting to do it. Okay, hi. Um, all right, so um, the two other things that I want to um, just say in this video. One is that I think, again, um, this is really emphasizing the point of the power of this formula, desired minus velocity. One of the things that um, you could not achieve with just pure gravitational attraction is this result, because let's say this is the target, let's say this is the vehicle, and this is its current velocity, and this is its desired velocity. What we're actually saying, remember here now, is steering equals desired minus velocity, which gives us a vector that points backwards. So this, form, this formula is so simple and so elegant, but yet it gives us a very powerful result in, say, in, in that even though our behavior is to move towards a target, that formula allows us to see if we're moving too fast that the force should actually push us backwards. I think I'm repeating myself a bunch of times, but hopefully that helps you know, under, people understand this material. OK, um, the other thing that just to um, go back to is uh, to say that you can, you can make up different scenarios for desired velocity, and I'll just show you a couple that, ex um, so this is example 6.2 if you're looking for um, where we are, but you can also take a look at um, just, to, you know, let's say you wanted to have a steering behavior where an object uh, stays on the screen. And so here we have just, this is not one of Reynolds' behaviors, also because it's much more primitive and less well thought out than all of his, but here we have um, a vehicle's desired velocity is its current velocity unless um, unless it's within 25 pixels of an edge, and then its desired velocity is a velocity that points away from that edge. And you can see how we can add a steering force here just to keep something within a rectangular boundary. Um, this, you know, if you're looking for an exercise, try to make that happen in, with a circular boundary. And there's an example just in the repository called Stay Within Circle, which you can look at here. And here we have something else, which the vehicle is actually looking to out into the future to see where it is. Um, and stay within a circle. So I just wanted to sort of point out that there's a couple extra examples there. Maybe this part of the video should be edited out. And if you're looking for an exercise, I'm going to give you one there. I don't have an example for this. It is an exercise, I think, in the book, so I probably will implement it at some point. But here is a nice, um, I think, uh, exercise for you to do that also um, illustrates an important point. So we, we just looked at seek and arrive, right? Seek is having a desired velocity that points towards an actual uh, target. What if, instead of a stationary target, this is some other vehicle or creature that happens to be moving as well? So if this vehicle is moving and this vehicle chooses to seek that vehicle, we're talking about this behavior known as pursuit. And one of the things with pursuit you can do is say, hey, I have a perception of my environment. I know this object's current velocity. I can predict that in a few moments, this is actually where it's going to be. And my desired velocity shouldn't be pointed towards its current location. It should be pointed towards where I believe its future location is going to be. And this is actually, the reason I bring this up is we're going to see this again and again in a lot of the scenarios. Or in particular, we're going to see this in the path following example. But this is something that you see in a lot of Reynolds steering behaviors where vehicles are looking at their current velocity and guessing where they're going to be in a moment to avoid an obstacle, or looking at another vehicle's velocity and guessing where it's going to be in a moment to avoid it or pursue it, to evade or pursue it. So in, you know, this is, if you think about it, if you were playing a game of Football, you know, the American football, we have to tackle somebody. <laughs> I have no experience with that game whatsoever. But if I'm trying to tackle somebody and I see them running down the field, I'm also going to run down the field to try to head them off. So creating that type of behavior um, is something, is a great um, exercise. So um, I'm going to suggest that as a little mini project you can work on before we go on to the next video. And in my list over here, um, the next video we're going to look at uh, a flow field. So steering behavior of following a flow field. Okay.